Hey everybody, it's Emily here and today's day 75 of the Odin Project. I'm currently working my way through the JavaScript course. I did some coding here and there over the past week, but I've mainly been spending time with my family over the holidays. And today was my first day getting back into the routine of coding full time. I've been working pretty hard on my weather app, so I'm excited to share with you the progress that I've made. So you'll see here on my screen on the right hand side, I have my weather app and on the left hand side, I have my code. I told you in the last video, I am using Webpack, ESLint and Prettier for this project. So you'll see I have all of the associated files here for those. And my JavaScript, I broke into three files. So I'm gonna walk through each of those files to show you how I have my project set up. The first file is the index.js file, which is very simple. It adds an event listener to the search button. So every time a user enters a location and presses the button, it will trigger the appropriate functions to populate the weather data. Specifically, it triggers the get location function which is located on my data.js file. So here at the end of the file, I have the get location function, which will take the input from the search bar and then it will assign it to a variable called location. And then it'll run that variable through the get data function. Now the get data function I reviewed in my last video, this is the magic that fetches the weather data from the Open Weather Map API so that you have all of the appropriate weather data. And then it passes that weather data into the filter data function. The filter data function takes the data and then creates a new weather object that only contains the relevant information that I'm looking for for populating the data on my web page. At the end of the function, I pass the new weather object into the show data function. So now we will move over to my third JavaScript file, which is the largest one. This here is my show data function. And what this function does is it actually creates and appends all of these elements for showing the weather data. If we look at my index.html file, I have an empty div for this part of the page. So none of this content exists yet. And then whenever the user types a location and clicks the search button, then all of these elements get created and appended to the page. So if we look at my show data function, the first step is actually to remove any existing content. That way, if a user has already looked something up, and then looks up another location, it will remove all of the old data and then populate all of the new data. All of this code after that section is really just creating all of these elements and appending them to the page. I created two functions to help me out with this. One is for creating elements where I can quickly input the type of element I want to create the text content and the parent to which I'd like to append the element. And then I have a create div function where I can input the class name and the parent. And these functions just help to cut down on all of my code down here for creating everything. Something that was really cool was learning how to populate the appropriate weather icons for the page. So Open Weather Map has a bunch of different weather icons for all different types of weather, and each icon has an associated code. And this code is included in the data that you fetch from their API. So to populate the correct icon, all you have to do is make sure that you save that code for the correct icon, and then you use that as part of your URL source for your image element. And so you can see here, I have my URL for Open Weather Map API, and then I have a variable right here for the icon ID. And that way, no matter what location that I put in, it will update with the correct icon for that type of weather. Lastly, I do have two buttons here for toggling between Celsius and Fahrenheit. I added event listeners to each of these buttons, which update the text content. 
And then I have two simple supporting functions, one that converts temperature to Celsius, and then one that converts temperature to Fahrenheit. That way the user can toggle between the temperatures and see whatever they prefer. So at this point, my weather app is fully functional. My next step for it is to do some error handling. That way a message will populate in case a user enters a location that isn't recognized. This is all that I have for today, so thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, let me know about your own coding journey in the comments below, or let me know if you have any questions. I hope you have a great day, and I will see you next time.